We continue to have these talks in Congress about the infrastructure package. Are these the issues that investors should watch when trying to determine where the markets are going from here? Well, obviously, the Fed, the news this, uh, this coming week, the, the mood music that comes from Jackson Hole will be very important. I don't want to downplay that too much. But I think in your opening piece, you got a sense of that mood, mood music, which is that tapering is coming and we're not going to be seeing $120 billion of monthly asset purchases through most of next year. But I think, again, the big question, the bigger question is what growth, what sustainable growth rates are possible and likely once we return to a more normal level of activity. And that, I think, will depend a lot more on the infrastructure bill, the $1.2 trillion that has been agreed on a bipartisan basis, and then, maybe more importantly, the, um, the bill that will come through reconciliation, probably not at $3.5 trillion, but something less than that. But where that money is going to be invested, what that does to support the economy over the next few years, rather than just the price of money over the next few months. Christopher, in fact, let's go to our question of the day because this goes directly to the key of, of the matter. How will Jackson Hole matter for assets, right? You mentioned the focus on fiscal policy, but what about Jackson Hole? This week on Friday, what will happen to assets? Well, I'm, I can't give you a, a precise forecast for this coming Friday. I think we'll, get, we'll generally get some more signals from the Fed that tapering is on the agenda. It's been discussed, we know, in the minutes. It's something that is coming. But this is a Fed, and Jay Powell is a chair who proceeds very deliberately, very carefully, and advertises his next move well in advance. So my personal bet would be we're not really going to get a taper announcement this time, but we'll be talking, you know, we'll get talk about tapering in the next meeting or the meeting thereafter. And to your question about what that means for assets, Again, I think the economy still continues to be strong. The COVID cases, the Delta variant is a cloud, but the overall trajectory of the economy, the recovery, even though there might be headwinds in hospitality and business travel, for example, uh, uh, vaccinations remain extremely effective against illness. Uh, and we think that the trajectory of a reopening yeah. economy remains very much the central theme of the next several months, indeed, into next year. How much of a shadow is continuing to be cast by the Chinese regulatory crackdown and all of the associated uncertainties over Asian assets, though? I think it's a big shadow that continues to be cast over Chinese tech companies. I'm not sure why that should necessarily expand out, other than for sentiment reasons, to other parts of the Asian markets or Asian economies. I think clearly the tech sector has been relatively unregulated in China over the past 10 or 20 years when you compare it to energy or finance or telecoms. And some of the measures that are being announced are kind of natural in the sense of uh, uh, payments activities dominated by a couple of companies, uh, ride, ha ride, ride hailing apps that may need more oversight. Um, but, but this is all part of a much broader effort by the Chinese government, it would seem, to really take control of what they believe is a central driver of Chinese growth over the next five or 10 years. Uh, Xi Jinping has made no uh, secret of that, and, and that it's probably natural that more rules will come into place, and investors mm -hmm. probably should have been waiting for this to happen, You know, even if it's unexpected that it was so sudden and so focused. Uh, but more rules were generally going to be coming to this part of the Chinese economy in any case, and, and clearly they're, they're here.